All right, so part two of our class is to go over actually what your homework is going to be. And your homework is to create what we call a lower third. Um, so the lower third uh, is also called Photoshop 1 in Blackboard. And we're going to zoom in a little. Um, and the Blackboard uh, description actually walks you through some of these steps. Um, but in class, we walked through it um, together to at least get started. So step one is to actually find an image. Um, that you're going to provide a, um, a caption for, basically. Um, so, so we're going to go to uh, Flickr. I'm just going to find something. Um, and remember that once you do a search, you have to, instead of any license, say Creative Commons. Make sure we're um, using proper, uh, properly licensed things. And choose a photo of some sort. Um, and when you do, make sure when you go to downloads that there's a version that's that's big enough. It has to be bigger than 1920 by 1080. Um, so this is a lot bigger than that. So we're going to click that to download. And I'm going to click this arrow to say show in Finder so I can know which one it is. Something. Okay. So now we have to bring this into Photoshop. But here's the thing. You're not going to just open it in Photoshop. We actually have to start a new file so that we can um, have the correct size to start off with. So you go File New, not File Open, File New. Um, and I have a slightly older version of Photoshop than you guys do, so my document type I select from here. You guys will have this big um, section there to select from. All right, um, but what you want to do is select um, Film and Video. And there's one that says, um, oh, where is it? There's an HD one. Let's see, HD TV. There we go. So yours will be in the top left hand corner. I'll say HD TV. And the settings will be 1920 by 1080 and 72 uh, DPI or pixels per inch. So what's happening here is that these presets kind of give us presets. Um, and 1920 by 1080 is your standard HD television. And 72 dots per inch is your standard resolution for said television. And it sets up also um, some, I want transparent, um, but RGB color and things like that that go with this setting um, for film and video. So hit OK. And it brings this up. And I am going to bring up some guides if I have them. I do not. That's okay. Um, and you guys will have some pixel uh, screen safe guides here. Found them. So you guys will have guides similar to this. They just won't be in neon blue. Um, and this allows you to uh, know how not close to the edge to get because you should be inside the inner guide. So now we need to take our picture and put it in here. So there are different ways to get pictures into um, Photoshop. So one of them is to have this open here and then we grab the photo and we drop it in here, but there's a problem with this. If you put it in like this, it shrinks it down to fit in here. And that's not what we want. So I'm going to undo. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go File, Open, or Control O. And I'm going to look for that photo. And we're going to, yes, there we go open it this way. And this is slightly tricky, but here's how this works. I take the move tool and I click this and I drag it up to the new tab and I don't let go and I drag it back down here. And what happens is it brings it in at full size, which means right now I can only see part of it. Um, but this is what we want. So again, I go to the photo, I use the move tool to click and drag it over to my working document and then I drop it in the center of the working document. So that's step one. Step two, as you can see this, um, that purple, as I was zooming in and out, that's the size of the image. So we need to shrink this. And we're gonna use the free transform tool. So edit free transform, and it creates this bounding box. And so this bounding box, if I hover over the corner, you'll see I get a new cursor. And if I hold down shift and drag, I can shrink this. Now holding down shift is really important because photographs will give away that um, they've been altered really quickly. And you want to get this so that it still fills the screen, but you can see as much of the photo as possible. 
Now, you're still going to be missing some of the photo. Photo standard sizes are not the same as video standard sizes. So you're going to have to pick which part of the photo to use. Are we going to have more of the sky? Are we going to have more of the ground? A little bit of both. Um, so you choose how you want to frame it, but you're always going to lose some of the image. That's just life. Um, and so now that I've had some, you know, gotten some of the work done, we're going to file, save. And because it's, it's untitled, I haven't actually done anything yet. I'm going to put my name, lower third. That way I can uh, have my file with my name on it. Now, I've got the image in here. That's one layer. I can double click the words to change it to the name background. Um, and I'm going to make a new layer on top and call it square or something like that because that's where we're going to put the box that the text goes into. I want it separate from my background layer. And we're going to use the second tool down. It's called the, um, I think it's the marquee select tool. It's rectangular marquee tool. There we go. And I'm going to drag out a box. I can always resize it later. Um, but doing this, if we select an area, we can only alter that area, which means if I grab my paintbrush and I can make my brush really big, which again is up here and then you change the size, but I can paint really sloppily and it only goes there, which is really nice. Um, and then I can go back to my move tool and I can move it around. Now, when you're done with the selection and you don't want there to be a selection anymore, you go select, deselect. All right, and if I ever need to change this, I can use that same edit free transform tool, drag this out a little bit, hit enter when I'm done, All right? We can still change it. Um, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, the box is the right size, the color's completely wrong because this is a terrible color for this particular thing. If you grab your move tool and this is the little preview for the layer, if you control click it, it selects everything. So then I can go in and I can choose a more appropriate color for what we're doing. Um, actually, I want a warm color. I'm kind of doing this quickly. These are not the best colors um, to use, but I don't want to spend too much time with this. Yeah, that's a little brown, but that's okay. Um, all right, so again, select, deselect to get rid of the bounding box. And then I grab the text tool, um, and the text will default to whatever color I had before. Um, so we've got to kind of, you know, change that to something more useful. And when I type, all right, it's going to make a new layer. And this is definitely not what I want to, to look like, but um, I can double click on the T here and I can change this typeface to whatever I want. Um, again, I'm going to choose this pretty quickly because I don't want to waste your guys' time. This is not my favorite look for this. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that um, this right here is called a serif font. It's got those little like blips at the bottom and top of the letters and those are to make it easier to, to read. That's great for paragraphs. Um, not so much for titles and things like that. So I'm going to find something that's sans serif. Uh, sans being either Latin or French for without. And you can see as I'm scrolling through these, it actually, um, it shows me what it will look like. And again, I'm going to choose something real quick that is not my favorite, but there you go. Um, and I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see it. I definitely need to change the size again with that free transform of the box because I need to be able to see all my lay. Oh, yes, apply. I need to be able to see all my letters. All right. Now, having the text in the box, this is what we would call the bare minimum. Um, but there are other things that we can do. So um, if you double click on a layer, not the words, not the preview, but the sort of blank area on that layer next to the words. If you double click that, you get what are called uh, layer styles. And don't go crazy because these, these can get um, out of hand really fast. But you can apply a stroke to the outside of the letters. Um, 
definitely this is the wrong color for me to uh, apply but if I click on the word stroke it gives me the options and um, this is too oh this is way too big um, that's why there, it doesn't look like it's on the outside there we go and I could tell the position to be on the outside and so it kind of there you go so you can see how this would be a highlight um, and maybe I wouldn't want it to be that color maybe a lighter version of the blue or green or something like that there we go um, and then there's also there's glows there's color all the there's a drop shadow um, which again use these with I'm gonna this extreme so you can see it don't do that um, <laughs> but tinker with these so you can see kind of how they would work what they look like um, and how, how things work if you hate them and you're like oh I hate this drop shadow click the little checkbox and it gets rid of it um, you can do the same thing with the square if you'd like so there's this bevel and emboss let's see if I can uh, there we go size kind of gives it that um, ooh actually I like the softer one there we go gives it that kind of depthy sort of look I guess um, also there's a where is it is there a glow of some sort outer glow here we go um, and then the size alright so you know tinker with these things um, one trick that I think will work yes so if you don't like the fact that there's like stuff happening on this this inside edge you can always shove it off the side of the screen and then this will be flat but then the rest of it will have an edge and then you just have to use that free transform again to kind of bring this out um, one of the things I'm doing is I'm making sure everything is above this top bar but I am allowing this to go off the side so you can go off to the edge like off the page but what you don't want to do is be close to the edge generally speaking in composition close but no cigar is eh, you, we don't like that um, completely falling off the edge though that's just that's dynamic that's nice um, and I'm gonna change the size again because I want there to be a little more again not too close all right um, and then if I want to get rid of the uh, where are my guides here show guides um, get rid of them I just want to see what it looks like all right and I'm gonna hit save again and the file you guys are gonna give me for this is the PSD I want to see how you guys construct these things um, so you want to save it like that um, but kind of tinker and, and go to town um, and, and, and try new things I'm gonna bring up some examples here all right so we have some uh, examples of these from other classes so some people did decide to knock off the page but you can see there's just a couple of nice little um, effects on here and the colors are well considered to go with this um, nope that one's not legible uh, here we've got one that's kind of trying to look like it's you know captioning a photograph rather not for video really more for just photo nope uh, let's see ah here we go here's another sports themed one um, got a, this is a good use of the drop shadow and the outline to try and like make things stand out and again it the colors are matching what's going on here so we're looking for sort of simple um, but good execution now this is more of a trying to be like a CD cover um, so matching the sort of weirdness of the image so you, you can kind of do different things with this if you'd like um, so here we have uh, <laughs> someone who knew a little bit more about shapes so they made a couple different shapes to kind of combine things um, so if, you, if you're comfortable with Photoshop and you, you want to do a little bit more um, you can go ahead and do that alright but when you're done you're gonna upload the PSD file to, uh, to this blackboard assignment